The relief valve sizing analysis can be performed in any stream within Promax by going to the Analysis tab in that stream, choosing Add Analysis, and selecting the relief valve sizing analysis. Once I open up this analysis, we'll see the different properties and things that are calculated for us here. I'm going to just go ahead and click Solve, which will use all the default values here. But let's talk about the different properties we have here. The very first thing that we would choose was which standard we'd like to use. So you'll see that the ASME API RP520 is the default, and it's the most commonly used. But we do have other standards that are listed here in the list. And these would be used depending on your situation or your location in the world. And so those other standards are also available to you. Once we've chosen a standard, the next thing to choose would be our type of valve. You'll see that we have conventional valves, balanced bellows, pilot operated valves, and rupture discs as well, with combinations of rupture discs and those other types of valves. Promax is going to calculate for us an effective discharge area, which is the area that our valve will require according to the discharge coefficient we have input here down below. You'll see Promax has filled this in with a default value, but if you knew your discharge coefficient, you could override this value, and Promax would calculate a different area according to that discharge coefficient. Continuing down our list of properties here, relief temperature is another property that we'll need to define. And this is the temperature uh, that your contents will be at, at relief pressure. And so this temperature is not the temperature at your set pressure, but it's the temperature increase that will be expected as the pressure increases up to your relief pressure. And so that value needs to be input by us. The set pressure is your normal standard pressure that you expect to be operating at. And then the relief pressure can be calculated in three different ways. We could, as a user, manually input a relief pressure, or we could manually input the overpressure, which is just how much more pressure we expect to be above the set pressure. Or the most common way of setting this relief pressure is by setting a fractional overpressure which by default here is saying that our relief pressure will be 10% more than the set pressure. But this value could be changed according to the situation you're sizing for. The next variable we see here is our back pressure, which oftentimes might be close to atmospheric pressure if you're relieving to the atmosphere. But if you have a long line of tubes or you're going on to another process, this back pressure might be higher and that might be something you need to calculate. Next up is our required flow through the valve. So this is how much flow we expect to see going through our valve. The mass flow is filled in here by default, but you could also specify an actual volume flow or a standard volumetric flow as well. Now, according to these conditions and the composition you've typed in, Promax will determine what type of relieving you have going on. So you'll see in our list, this can be a flashing mixture of liquid and vapor, could be a non-condensable situation, a liquid only or vapor only. Promax will determine what type of relieving situation you have from here. Promax will also tell you whether this is a critical flow situation. And so depending on your relief pressure and your back pressure, Promax will calculate whether critical flow will be achieved or not, or whether we'll have choked flow in this instance. It's telling us that this is true for our case right now. We've mentioned our discharge coefficient, and one other correction factor we have is our back pressure correction factor, which you could input here as well. Right below that, we have a list of additional correction factors that might be included if you're using a different standard. If I continue down the list, Promax also calculates a mass flux and an inlet latent heat for us. An alternative to the inlet latent heat is the heat of vaporization calculations that can be performed here. If I check this box, Promax will now calculate a minimum differential heat of vaporization according to the maximum mole fraction we'd like to go up to and the number of increments that we'd like to see calculated along the way. So increasing the number of increments will increase the accuracy of your calculation. It could also slow down your calculation. And so generally speaking, 20 increments is enough. 
You'll see now if I click solve again that we have a differential heat of vaporization that has been calculated. And so you could use that value as well if you prefer. But these are the different values that are calculated by the PROMAX relief valve sizing analysis.